Cyberpunk has been removed from PlayStation Store, more info on Overwatch 2 coming early next year, and EA trying to acquire Codemasters. Hello everybody and welcome to a new video of Gamer Connect. My name is Gen Manis and you guys are watching Top Gaming News of this very week. Cyberpunk had a rough launch in all platforms but most importantly on PlayStation 4 and Xbox, with the game being heavily buggy, textures not loading at all and making the game just unplayable. With that, CD Projekt Red also apologized for the situation and offered refunds for the game. Looking at this situation, Sony also came forward saying that they will offer the refund but they will also remove the game from the store itself. Unfortunately for those who actually bought the game on PlayStation 4 and Xbox, thinking that you could enjoy the game by the end of the year, I would be disappointed as well because the game is, well, very, very bad for those consoles. Now this week it was reported by Jason Scryer at Bloomberg that some of the employees of CD Projekt Red asked questions to the studio management. One of them said that why was it told that Cyberpunk is finished by January when it was actually not? When asked about the crunch, the studio director said that the plan was to improve production practices but it wasn't elaborated. Most of the employees, including past and present, have told that the deadlines were unrealistic. It looks like CD Projekt Red crunched hard time to make the game release while some probably believe, again, according to the reports, that it wasn't completed and needed more works. It's quite annoying to see that CD Projekt Red made a game like this after so many delays and then it was released and people started playing it even though the game is not bad. The game is actually pretty good with storylines, characters and city but there are various amount of bugs which actually, you know, irritates a lot of people including me. For example, in some places I will have to reload a checkpoint because I was stuck or something was looping again and again. It was even worse for people playing in last gen consoles because a lot of videos have been circulating around how the bugs are absolutely trash and it is very hard for anyone to enjoy the game. Last time a game that was taken away from a store was Batman Arkham Knight which was taken away from Steam because the PC version of the game was very buggy, was unstable, was unoptimized. This time it's happening again, only with consoles and I definitely feel bad for them. Rainbow Six Siege is now 5 years old and to celebrate this occasion, Ubisoft is taking the game back to its root. The limited time legacy arcade mode runs till 5th January and the game turns back to how it was when it came out. The maps go back the way it looked back then along with 20 operators with original loadouts. It would actually be funny if Ubisoft be like, now we do all the updates the way it was done before all over again. Then people immediately will stop playing this game. <laughs> Rainbow Six Siege has gone through so many great changes and now it has become such a great game. Of course the game has a lot to learn for anybody who is joining new with so many operators but that's how every live service game works quite frankly. There are so many things to learn so that you can choose your own way of playing the game. But during the very first launch a lot of people actually felt that this game is horrible and it's nothing like what was shown in the E3 demo. But now, with the help of the community, the game has evolved and evolved and evolved and now it's on a level that is quite fascinating to look at. Now the game is more focused, already eSports ready and always has something new to offer. Have you guys played Rainbow Six Siege? Well, let me know in the comments below which operator is your favorite in defense. Overwatch very recently put out a video with Jeff Kaplan in it. The man hasn't been seeing in about, what, 7 months? Where were you Jeff all this time? I needed you in the game. Overwatch is actually bringing a new map, a, a new map, it's very surprising to me. The map's name is called Kanazaka, which by the name of it, of course, it's set in Japan, but interestingly, it's right under Hanamura Castle. So if you look around using a mouse, uh, you can see the Hanamura Castle all the way up top. They've also added some funny things in the map, including one of them that Jeff actually pointed out, which was a cat cafe, which will feature all the Overwatch's cats. Interesting. According to Jeff, it was just an experiment on a free-for-all deathmatch map and it was so good that the team thought of bringing it to full production. With all that, Jeff also talked about Overwatch 2, that they will be talking more about it in February on BlizzCon which will be happening online. And with this new map coming, there are some easter eggs to the lore as well. He says to pay attention to every single little detail in the map. Right now, the game has added a brand new mode for the Winter Special. This mode is called Freeze Thaw Elimination which is a 4v4 game where you instead of dying will be freezed and the first team to freeze every single member of the other team wins the game. 
This event also brings back May's Snowball Offense and Yeti Hunt as well. I'm looking forward to Overwatch 2. I want to see what they can come up with. As far as we know, the game will have more story missions and will have a new mode in multiplayer called Push. We have to wait and see till BlizzCon, that is next February, to know what is exactly happening with Overwatch 2. Earlier this year, Take-Two Interactive announced that it was leading the acquisition process for Codemasters, a UK-based developer known for racing titles such as Dirt Franchise. The terms of agreement would have taken Take-Two Interactive acquiring Codemasters for $973 million. But now looks like there's a new player who has joined this competition. EA announced that they have reached an agreement to acquire Codemasters for a price of $1.2 billion. This is of course a lot more than what Take-Two is offering right now. EA believes right now that it's a very good combination that they can work with Codemasters. Reason why is because EA itself have a racing franchise of Need for Speed. So now they can work with a franchise of Dirt and even make much more new games and maybe improve Codemasters. Not only that, Codemasters will also get a lot of benefit from EA. Looking at the very recent installment of NFS, that is NFS Heat, the game actually is really cool and now Criterion is making the next NFS game. So I'm looking forward to these NFS games and I believe that maybe EA is actually doing good with racing games and hopefully and maybe if Codemasters is being acquired by EA, they might even get and have a better opportunity on working on new titles uh, with EA and bring out a new franchise maybe or maybe continue Dirt in a much better fashion. Even though I know that a lot of people have trust issues with EA, don't worry, I also have them, but I still have a little bit of hope. Codemasters latest game is Dirt 5, so have you guys played that game? Let me know in the comments below, because believe it or not, Dirt was actually my first, very first racing game that my uncle showed. So let me know in the comments below if you guys have played that. A very interesting looking horror game by the name Devotion has been going through a lot of struggles. The game was removed in Steam because many people in China protested against the game, which made Steam to remove the game altogether. Earlier this month, the studio had the privilege to re-release the game because GOG was about to sell this game to everyone. But then later on, GOG announced that they are removing the game from the store because a lot of messages were sent to them. Now these messages could be coming from gamers and a lot of people from China with the same reason why it was removed from Steam. The game actually referred the president of China as a Winnie the Pooh moron. I'm not surprised that people did not like that one. Red Candle Games, the devs of this game apologized and said that they take all the responsibility for this and they failed on their part. But after the game was re-released, I thought that this game will finally be back and I can finally play it, but I was a little bit too late. Red Candle Games tweeted out that they hope that the game can return back as it's very difficult predicament to overcome, but they won't stop striving. Red Candle Games also made this game called Detention which is available for free in Android and it's also available on Steam right now. And the game has received a hell lot more of positive response for being a great horror game. There's also a Netflix adaptation of this very game. I definitely feel sad that Red Candle Games cannot bring out another game uh, that they wanted to show to everybody ever since the success of Detention. I hope that they can somehow, in some way, bring this game back. Mirror's Edge is a game made by EA which in my opinion is a really cool parkour game with a lot of action. The downside to this game was how you were fighting some people who were using guns while you were just fisting and parkouring. But regardless, for me the game was really fun because I love parkour and that is exactly what this game is all about. The last game of Mirror Edge was Mirror's Edge Catalyst which was the second game of Mirror Edge franchise you can say. Apparently there's a new footage revolving around of the new Mirror's Edge game. The footage is very small but it was released back in 2015 on Instagram by someone and quickly got deleted. There has been no info on this unfortunately. Mirror's Edge 2 that people are calling it actually was supposed to release in 2011 but EA cancelled it because EA did not like its prototype. Instead we got Mirror's Edge Catalyst that came out in 2016 which ended up to be a very cool game. I hope EA can give another chance to Mirror's Edge because I believe that's a wonderful game. Mirror's Edge Catalyst was really cool, I really love uh, the voice actors, I really love the protagonist, so I would love for that game to come back so that we can continue the story. Speaking of leaks, there are more leaked images for the next Resident Evil game that is Resident Evil 8 Village. These leaks are a number of screenshots and from the looks of it, the game will be amazing. There are some pretty wild monsters to fight with, the game looks a lot bigger somehow and it has a flying type monster. What is this, Monster Hunter Worlds? 
I'm really looking forward to Resident Evil 8 Village. I'm a big fan of Resident Evil. Ever since Resident Evil 7, I am very much involved into Resident Evil and I would love to see where the story of Ethan is gonna go with Resident Evil 8. Are you guys excited as well? Let me know in the comments below. Well, that is all we had to talk about in this episode of Top Gaming News. Hope you guys enjoyed this one and if you did, leave a like and also comment down below what you think about any of the news we just discussed. And do not forget to subscribe to Gamer Connect because more such awesome things are just coming out at the end of 2020. Do not want to miss that out. My name is Gin Manis and I'll check you guys out next time.